Sean, the principle of sufficient reason calls for everything to have a reason. And the question is, everything in the cosmos must have a reason, but does the cosmos as a whole have to have a reason? Is it a different question to ask about the totality of reality than about any element within reality? Yeah, I think the, the motto I would like to put forward is that the principle of sufficient reason is complete rubbish. <laughs> There's no reason to think that at all. There's no reason to think that individual things in the universe have reasons any more than the universe as a whole does. So I don't think that reasons are things that should be part of our fundamental ontology. Like other emergent phenomena, they're human-sized things. You know, the reason I put this book on the table is because I wanted to know where it was and so forth. But when you talk about physics or cosmology, then reasons and explanations and purposes are not the right language to use. Okay, so when we say that, uh, that uh, objects in motion will remain in motion unless something stops them, um, it, it, there's, a, there's a reason why they are not being stopped, as Aristotle might have thought. Uh, that, 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 and you can say I wouldn't that, put it that way. You, you'd say that there's a, a physical regularity that, that, that... I would say there's a pattern. There is a law of physics. Most of the laws of physics that we know come in the form of differential equations. But the point is that what science has taught us is that when we get to the deepest level of reality, there are things that happen over and over again. Right. And they happen in a pattern. Right. And that's it. Then there's no more like why is, I mean, you could say, well, we don't know the whole pattern yet, and therefore you can use clues that we found to guess about the larger one. But ultimately, there's going to be a brute fact. There's going to be, that's the way it is. Let's move on to other so questions. So as an example, I was using Newton's laws. Everybody thought that, was, that was, was discovered. It was sure. And then it was working, working. And then Einstein, of course, there were little problems with it. Now show that. Now maybe there's something deeper. But at some point, you're saying there has to be a brute fact. Yes, absolutely. And, and we may or may not ever know when we get there, but we can never go beyond it wherever it is. I don't see any problem with there being a collection of brute facts that, on which we base our understanding of the universe. It might be that somehow there's some principle of simplicity or necessity or fun or whatever in which those brute facts are explained, but still they're, they're facts. And you know, that there has to be some end to the chain of explanations. I don't think we should resist that some in any way. Some people disagree with that, by the way. Some people think there's an inf there could be an infinite chain of, of <clears throat> causation or an infinite chain of, of reasons, or call it what you will, uh, going down and down. I mean, physicists don't believe in God or anything like that. We'll take that as an alternative explanation. I find that hard to conceive, and I would be with you to think at the end of the day there has to be some brute fact. You, call it whatever you want. But uh, do, do you see that other possibility as, as, a, as, as one that has a sustainable argument? That I think it's logically possible that there's sort of an infinite series of right. finer and finer grainings right. of reality that we learn more and more about. I see no reason for it to be that way, no evidence that it is that way. It is an empirical question, so I don't, I don't need to take an okay. opinion one so, way or the so other. Strangely, we're allied on this in terms of, <laughs> of, where, we, of where we're going. and we, we have a collection of brute facts. We don't know what they are. How many brute facts do you think there are in the universe? I have zero idea. Well, I mean, is it one? Thirteen. I have no, I have no, no idea. No, no, I know you have no idea, but you, at least we can, we can make a guess. If it, I think we'd say it's, you'd say it's more than one. If I believed in God, maybe I'd say it's one. If I don't believe in God, I, I would say more than one. So we, we know it's, I think, if I can put words in your mouth, it's more than one. Brute fact? Would you say it's more than one brute fact? You know, I think that, yeah, this is a good question. How, what is the sort of most algorithmically simple description we can find of the universe? There is some law of physics. Uh, there is some space of states the universe could take on. There is some initial condition in the space of states. So you could easily imagine that the number of bits it takes to describe the universe is a hundred or something like that. But it could be much, much larger, much, much smaller. I just don't know. And so you could have a, a few or you could have a very large number of, of, of brute facts. I mean, I, I think we're we have to see between brute facts and, and bits because a brute fact might be a composition of a, to describe it in more than one bit. I, sure. I, I know knows? what a bit is. I don't know what a fact is. So yeah. I'm happier with the bits. Okay. <laughs> so, so, so you then would say there are a number of brute bits. There's an amount of information that is the minimal amount you would need to fix the universe. Right. Yeah. And you have no idea what, what, what that, I mean, but, but you speculate on so many things. Why can't you speculate on that? Oh, I can speculate about so, lots so of things, so but it. I think no, but I think that there's a there's sort of 
speculations for which we have good reasons from what we know, and okay. speculations where it's just speculation, just yeah, reflection but, but of your you, personality, you know, not your knowledge. But you know, you have a very good sense of the laws of physics, and, and, mm -hmm. and, and the laws of uh, particle physics at the micro level, and at the cosmological level, these are two worlds you live in, uh, and, and have some understanding of the hierarchies in between. Right. And, and so right. you can seemingly derive some of those hierarchies in between for some of the lower stuff, maybe, maybe, maybe there are special laws, maybe there are brute facts at hierarchy levels. Would exactly. You, I mean, can you, can you, would you accept, is that a possibility? Some, many I, people say no. Yeah, but, I'm highly and, doubtful about that. I'm okay. a reductionist so, at heart. Okay, so reductionist at heart, that means that everything at, at, at higher levels, even though they seem emergent and seem impossible to explain at that level, can ultimately be explained at the most fundamental level. Yeah, that's so right. That, so, so you would be limiting the number of, of uh, brute facts that ultimately you'd have to deal with. Yeah, you need the fundamental, the most fine-grained theory of reality and some specification of if there's many, many different solutions to that theory, which solution we actually live in. Yeah, but, and, and within that solution, how many things are necessary to create all the things that we right. know that exist? I don't, this, I don't think that this is things that we are anywhere near having an educated discussion about. I just don't think that we know enough about physics to say anything like that. I think that it would be wildly premature. It's about as accurate as Aristotle chatting about cosmology. Why do you call the universe preposterous? It's a great question, why do we call the universe preposterous? Because the universe is not preposterous. Let's just face it. It's a rhetorical gesture toward the fact that there are features of the universe that puzzle us human beings. Clearly, the fault is in the human beings, not in the universe, right? So the preposterous universe is a statement about what the universe looks like to us. And in particular, there are features of the universe, like the low entropy near the Big Bang, like the fact that it's 70 or so percent dark energy and 25 percent or so dark matter. We don't know why it's like that. And in particular, the dark energy is changing with time relative to the matter and so forth. So there's coincidences and weird features that the universe has. And it's not that these must be explained because they could just be brute facts. I don't know for, for sure. But what I do know is that I don't know the final theory of the universe. And therefore, when things about the universe look puzzling to me, I take these as clues to get a better understanding. So I could just say, yes, the early universe had a low entropy. That's the way it is, and I can't ask anymore. But because I know I don't understand the early universe, the fact that it had a low entropy is crucially important to me as I try to build models that account for what happened at the Big Bang.